Welcome to our online Christmas Eve service for 2021. Believe me, we had not anticipated doing it this way. I'm sitting in the sanctuary by myself, and I had fully anticipated that tonight we would gather together and celebrate together Christmas Eve and think about the birth of Jesus Christ. But we can't do that tonight. So I'm glad that you've joined us for this online service. And I pray that it will be a time of reflection and a time of thoughtful consideration of God's love for us. Tonight and tomorrow, we celebrate the birth of the Messiah, the coming of the Lord, the one that the world had been waiting for, the promised one. And we have anticipated this and looked forward to it with great longing. But we are also reminded that the promised one who came has promised to come again. And as we conclude our Advent season with the birth of Christ and Christmas Day, we have to allow the words, the last words of the Bible be true for us as well. They say, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Our scripture reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 9, Matthew chapter 1, and Luke chapter 2. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. This is the word of the Lord. We pray that you'll enjoy this time of reflection and this brief Christmas Eve service. 
Uh, ho, ho, ho. It's, it's me again, just in time for the holiday season. You like the hat? Yeah, I picked it up myself. Anyway, Merry, it's not politically correct to say any more Christmas. By the way, what'd you get? Did you make your list out yet? Huh? What are you getting? What are you expecting? Did, did you get your kids that the great sought after game gadget of the whole world? Is it the best in the world? Huh? Did you get them that yet? What's in the stocking? Are you, are you, are you done shopping? How many days are left? You know what? Did your, did your whining little kids go kicking and screaming all the way to the lost North Pole and some little local strip mall yet? Did they do that? Sit on Santa's lap? Did you sit on Santa's lap yet? Did you get a $40 Polaroid of it? It's money well spent. Yeah, that'll be a coaster in no time. What about the Xmas cards? The Xmas cards, you send those out yet? I don't think you did, because I haven't. The Xmas cards are not out yet. What about the family photo? The family photo, you know, the one everybody flips past just to get the cash? Send that one out yet? I don't think you did. Are the lights up? Is the tree up? <gasps> Is your blood pressure up? You know what, have you set up one of the 946 available nativity scenes yet? Because my personal favorite is the new one with the new action figure Jesus. Yeah, you just flip the lever in the back and it reaches up to the Magi for the gold. It grabs the gold. Very popular in the OC. Oh, don't say that, not the OC. Don't do that to me, don't do that to me. No, 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 no. I'm not finished yet. Did you get that special gift for that special someone? Will they like you more now? Will you like them more if they get you what you want, huh? Does it come with batteries? Does it come in pieces? Does it come with some assembly required? Did you watch? It's a wonderful life. One more time, and, and when the angel gets its wings, you cry, even though that's not how it works at all. Did you, did, you, did you gain 10 pounds yet? Did you gain any insight? Did you gain anything at all? Am I, am I even close? Am I even asking the right questions? Ooh, the right question. Excuse me, the right Christmas question. What is Christmas all about? Huh, is it real or is it just this real make-believe fantasy Santa Claus and get me what I want, snowy winter wonderland that we've all made it to be? What is Christmas all about? Oh, better yet, who is Christmas all about? Now there is the life-changing, transformative question of all eternity. And the answer is really simple. It's really simple. You want to know what the answer is? I know you do. But unfortunately, I can't tell you because I'm expecting Santa Claus to come down the chimney any time. I even set up all the cookies for him. So we'll have to get to the real meaning of Christmas, you know, when I can get a rebate for it. So for now, Merry... I mean, Happy Holidays. I'm reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. This is the word of God.
Here is a song from last year's Christmas Eve service that features some of our men, Dale, Bernie, and Irv, as they sing the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the, the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God. Did you know 
I'm reading from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God. The Apostle John describes Christ's birth from a theological standpoint. There's no shepherds, there's no wise men, there's no mangers, there's not even any angels. This is what the Word of God says from the Gospel of John. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which is his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. And earlier in the chapter, He says, the light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness has not overcome it. I am encouraging you to get a candle if you don't have one already and light it for the next few moments as we enjoy this candlelight service online. Jesus said clearly in John 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. We know the science. We know that no matter how dark it gets, uh, how dark the room may seem, a single light dispels the darkness. It speaks of hope. It speaks of uh, the future. It speaks of God's presence. The darkness cannot overpower the light. And as you hold on to that candle that you've lit, think about Jesus and the hope that he brings to your life. There may be a lot of uncertainty in your life at this time. In fact, in many places, even darkness perhaps. But there is hope for freedom and hope for deliverance in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that many people do not recognize Jesus, nor have they received him as their Savior and Lord. But to those who do receive him, they have the right and the opportunity to be part of God's family forever. Our prayer for you is that you if you have not done so, would do that this Christmas, that this would be the year that you say yes to the Lord. And it's as simple as that, a simple prayer that says, yes, God, come and be Lord of my life. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord, and I welcome you into my life. It can be that simple. For those of you who have already done so, uh, we pray that you will be blessed again with the consideration of God's great love that he has for you. And as we celebrate the birth of Jesus again this year, Merry Christmas to you. Come down, Emmanuel. 